All right, people, so today we're gonna to talk all about growing figs in containers from day one of the season to actually the winter time and what needs to be done. Um, we're gonna do a separate video on growing fig trees in the ground, but for this one, everything I'm about to mention is strictly for growing them in containers. I think it's uh, quite a different perspective and, and a different way of doing it. Um, and I believe they deserve their own separate video. Um, you can see here that I have many fig trees, guys, in containers. I've been growing figs in containers now for about four to five years. And I really enjoy the fruits off of these figs because I can really control the water that is given to these figs. By controlling the water, um, you'll actually get a higher fruit quality. This one here is called Smith, one of my tastiest figs. And uh, it actually does pretty well in my Pennsylvania patio here. By controlling the water, uh, the bricks, the sugar content will actually be much higher in the figs. We want to give our trees, our fig trees guys, a drought tolerant plant that is the fig tree that can survive in desert climates. We want to give them the minimum amount of water to survive, to be healthy, to hold on to its figs, and that's it. Anything extra will dilute the flavor of the fig. So if you're like me and you're in Pennsylvania and you are in a short season climate that's also humid, it's going to be very difficult to grow figs because we have too much water, but also our season is much shorter than some fig varieties will allow. If you find a fig tree, guys, on the internet, maybe locally from a friend, I would say most of the time it's going to perform decently well for you, but there's a huge variety of figs out there, just like there are of apples, Granny Smith, you know, uh, <laughs> Fuyu, or... <laughs> you gala apples I mean there's so many different types of apples just like there are figs and each variety has really unique interesting characteristics that can perform exceptionally well in your garden and your area um, Smith is one of them that performs very well here it's a Louisiana heirloom fig from France so depending on where these figs originate guys can have a really big impact on how well they do for you so that's one big tip for growing them in containers because if you're growing in them in containers, the big benefit is that you can grow later season varieties. Why? Because a fig tree, guys, has a lot more access to heat in a container. And fig trees love heat. I mean, their metabolisms, just like cold-blooded insects or cold-blooded animals, really go crazy they start to become very active that's why the mosquitoes are only active in the summer you know they go crazy biting you all over your legs and your arms um, because it's warm the same thing with the figs they love the heat and the more heat they can get the better so that's a huge plus that containers give them because these containers are above grounds the soil is actually quite cool depending on the time of the year. We're also on the patio. We have lots of heat that is reflected off of this patio during the day. It also releases heat at night. Any form of concrete that we can surround these fig trees with, guys, is going to be a huge benefit, whether it's rocks or brick, walls, all of that is going to be huge. and just having them in a container gives them so much more access to heat to be able to ripen properly and in time before the frosts come in. In my area, I only have about 180 days of growing season, which is really, really uh, quite short. There's definitely places that have a shorter growing season than I do, but to have 180 days to ripen a fig 90 of which it takes for the fig from its setting to fully ripe. So this here is Smith 90 days ago. 
this fig had just formed on the branch. 90 days later, it's ripe. Um, and that's a lot of time. So 90 days, that's half of our growing season is dedicated to actually ripening the fig. So that means we have really only a month or two to get the figs to set, right? It's late October now, and you can see that there's actually small pea-sized little figs on this young tree that have just formed. If we waited 90 days, those would be ripe, but we have frost in 15 days, so that's never gonna happen. But that's the big benefit, is being able to give your trees a lot of heat um, by growing them in containers this way. The other huge benefit is because here in Pennsylvania, we get to zero degrees Fahrenheit every year. I'm in the Philadelphia area. Go Eagles. But um, zero degrees is really not good for a subtropical tree. Um, there are some exceptions. And I have some trees in the ground here in Pennsylvania, which we're going to talk about. I can show you guys some right now. And I have them planted against the house. You can see right here. Why? Because the house gives them a lot of protection in the wintertime. Because if the temperatures are zero degrees, that usually means your tree will die all the way to the ground. The wood will not survive below zero in most cases. There are few exceptions, like certain varieties have adapted to the cold better than others. One is called Hardy Chicago very widely available you should be able to find it online it's also very early now the other big benefit because the wood gets killed off at zero the roots get killed off at 20 degrees fahrenheit so because the roots are above the grounds they don't have the protection from the earth's heat in the winter time it really is a big benefit to move these guys um, from harm. And this is where winter protection comes in. So our trees go out here in my area in May. They go out here on the patio every May without question. That's the end of our, that's our last frost. And then by sometime around June, July the latest, July 1st, we will pinch the tip off of our fig trees. You can see this one's missing the tip. The fruits will form and then 90 days later, we'll have a ripe fig. Then the winter comes. Now that we're in October, we're 15 days away from frost. We wanna let these guys hang out on the patio until they actually get hit with a couple frosts, believe it or not. We wanna put them away sometime in Thanksgiving and then in Thanksgiving, we're going to take all these guys. It's going to be a really long day. I mean, with the amount of them here, it's it's a long, long day. Luckily, I have some friends this year. They're going to be helping me with my crazy fig addiction. It's all worth it, trust me. And we're going to be putting a lot of them in the greenhouse, which will be heated. It's a very small six by nine greenhouse we already have a fig in here and why do we have a fig in here because it still has a couple fruits on it that i would like to get them to ripen in time so this is one way to extend your season you can see here this is black madeira arguably one of the tastiest figs in existence it's also a very late season fig so by me being able to grow a very late season fig that probably takes 180 days to fruit um, you know this is one way that you're able to do it by growing it in a container moving it in and out of the greenhouse at different times of the year can really be beneficial so that is pretty much it guys that's how to grow a fig in a container um, the last thing I want to mention because we mentioned water um, well, actually, you know what? We, we haven't mentioned a couple of things. So let me go over light. We definitely want full sun without question. Um, don't waste your time if you only got six hours of light or below. 
you could probably get away with seven. I think some of my trees actually only get about seven hours of light. But heat is the most important issue and food is the most important issue. We talked about water, minimal water, maximum sunlight, maximum heat, and a lot of food. Figs are heavy feeders, guys. They're very vigorous. They put on a lot of growth in one season. You can have a full-size tree in no time. I promise you. And if you feed them right, especially early in the season, it's very key. So let's rewind back in May. We put them all on the patio. We give them a nice dose of fertilizer and we do this until August. The fruits form in um, about July and June. And then we end our fertilizer in August because we don't want our trees at this point in the year, unfortunately some of them do, we don't want them to be green. We want them to be lignified, fully hardened because when that frost comes in, in 15 days from now, we want that growth here to be able to withstand that frost. Like I said, the wood can withstand zero degrees. The roots can withstand 20 degrees, but if the wood is not hardened, like I just showed you, even this tree here, it will not be able to withstand a frost. Only if the wood is fully hardened will we have success. So that's pretty much the gist of it guys we want to be feeding them maximum sunlight maximum heat minimal water the benefits of putting them in the greenhouse versus having them on the patio being able to move them around that is essentially it I think uh, one last point I want to make before I let you guys go we want to grow them as a tree in a container there's only so much nutrients there's only so much uh, soil, there's only so much, so big the tree can grow that it's important that I think we have one trunk that the nutrients have to go through one trunk rather than three or four or five. The fig tree will like to grow as a bush. We want to prevent that. Here we have suckers down here. This is actually a rootstock. I grafted this variety, but we want to remove all suckers. You want to come in here many times throughout the year, remove those if you see any, and let the tree branch out as a tree form. And if you guys want to know more about fig trees and how to, how to prune them, the exact specifics of what fertilizer I use, really all the specifics from day one of my season to even the winter time, how I'm overwintering them, not just by using the greenhouse, um, then stay tuned. You can go back and also watch some of my other videos. This is what we talk about on my channel. So thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, please subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I like to post many different things on there that I find interesting about gardening and, and fruit and vegetables cooking as well that I normally don't post through my videos um, so yeah talk to y'all later this was Ross thank you all for watching take care